Hi everyone, Luke here from Weekend Tour Pros. We're back again today with another club review and today we are reviewing this. It's the Cobra Aerojet Driver. Now all of the reviews that I've seen online this year of the driver so far claim it delivers fantastic ball speeds and some unbelievable forgiveness. Now all of those reviews have been from professional golfers and fast swing speed players, so I wanna see if those two claims still stack up when you put it in the hands of an average swing speed and mid handicap golfer like myself. So let's get down to the studio and let's put it to the test. Okay, so just got down to the fitting bay and got the Cobra Aerojet driver in my hands for the first time. Now, if you've watched my review on the Cobra Aerojet irons, you'll know I absolutely love those irons, particularly at the price point they came in at this year. If you've not seen it and you wanna see it, I'll put a link up to it in the corner for you now. Really, really keen to get my hands on this driver because I've heard lots of really good things. And despite the fact, again, that drivers are becoming more and more expensive because the cost of raw materials has gone up as part of this kind of inflation and cost of living, the Cobra driver is one of the cheaper new drivers that's available on the market and I have heard, like I say, some fantastic things about it. In terms of the looks of this driver, at the bottom of the driver we've got a lot of white paint on it. I'm not a massive fan of white paint on the top of drivers, so some of those really older tailor-made versions, but at the bottom of the driver it doesn't offend me whatsoever. I think you'd know it was a Cobra Aerojet driver if you've seen what one of these looks like. That black and kind of grey sort of checkered pattern that's on a lot of golf clubs this year it seems to be the kind of colourway on a lot of golf clubs this year. There's there's a big chunk of that. You can see the blue weighting on the bottom. And yeah, it's pretty cool looking. I do like the Aerojet irons. I do like this as well at the bottom. In terms of setting it down at a dress, you've got a real kind of high gloss of that kind of black and gray checkered pattern sitting up at you. If you're someone who likes a high gloss driver, you'll really, really like the looks of this. If you're someone who prefers a more matted finish driver like my Ping G410, maybe this won't appeal to you as much because you can see the light bouncing off of it when it's sat here at a dress. So that might be something that some of you don't like. You've got this kind of slightly sort of C shape that matches kind of the the, the shape of the driver, this like white painted C shape. And it does really frame the shape of this driver that it is kind of pulled quite back, but it is kind of a sleek sort of, it is the letter C as a shape. So if you're someone who's used to kind of a driver that's got a bit more sort of, um, I guess, squarey nature of, of, of the design. This is definitely more kind of rounded, definitely feels very, very symmetrical as well. You've got the little C Cobra logo as a lineup line. And on the face, something I really, really like about Cobra drivers is they have kind of some really cool colorway on the face with the ring that sort of centers the sweet spot for you. And I think it makes it really easy to line up your ball into that sweet spot as well. So yeah, a really, really good looking driver. I've heard fantastic things about it, so keen to give it a hit. Before I do, I just want to tell you a little bit about the three Cobra Aerojet drivers in the range. First of all, you've got the Cobra Aerojet LS, the low spin model, designed for low spin and a slightly lower launch. That's got two weights that are kind of situated just behind the face uh, that are designed to help kind of give a bit of stability there. You've then got the standard Cobra Aerojet, which is what I'm testing today. Just one weight situated right at the back center of the club, again, just to kind of help with that MOI, help with that launch, etc., by pulling some of that weight back away from the face and lower down. And then you've got the Max version, quite typical for most manufacturers these days to offer that kind of version. It's a bit more draw bias, it's supposed to help those of us with a slice just to try and correct it. That's got an additional weight in the heel as well, just to try and help with that slightly more draw bias. So hopefully there's a different version for all of you out there, depending on what your needs. As a lefty, I've got my hands on the standard one, keen to give it a hit, see how it compares to my Ping G410 from a couple of years ago. So let's hit some shots. I've hit that a little bit cutty. Not sure if that was me or the driver. Got 198.6 yards, which as you'll see isn't long or my longest. I did deliver 91.6 mile an hour club head speed. My ball speed was 129. We'll keep an eye on that because I'm normally in the 130s. Carrying, like I say, at 198.6, spinning at 2981, launching at 13.7. So when we talk about drivers, we're always talking about high launch, low spin. So we'll keep an eye on those two parameters as well, as well as just seeing how my club head and ball speeds relate to what I'm getting out of my own driver. Good start. That's definitely high launching. Two shots in a row, definitely hitting a little baby cut with it. Club head speed of 93, ball speed of 134, which is exactly what I would expect to see with my own ping. 
Carry 212, fantastic. That's exactly what I'd want to see. That's nearer the top end of my carry. I'm 210, 211 on a good hit. Spinning at 3,199, launching at 14.3. Uh, so what we've seen there is we've definitely seen that high launch and it does feel like it's launching really high. Two little baby cuts onto target. So really consistent ball flight, two in a row. And we've seen the club head and the ball speed that we're expecting there as well. So yeah, some really good numbers actually, really strong. And it does sound really solid and really firm. So if you're like, to, if you like that feel of kind of a firm driver off the face, I think you'll like this. It's, it does sound solid. I do really like this lineup line. This sort of circular shape that you can put behind the ball is great. I've just lost that one a little bit to the left. So again, that's probably on me, but it's probably where, again, I would normally use a max version of a driver just to help me there. Again, club head speed of 93.1. Ball speed of 134.5, carrying at 206, total 223, spinning at 3659, launch at 13.4. So again, one of the things that all drivers these days are talking about, they're all talking about kind of how forgiving they are. They can't make them any faster because smash factor, ball speed divided by club head speed is limited at 1.5. So all these manufacturers now and all their marketing blurb and Cobra no different this year, talking about making it more forgiving if you're off center with it. I think we've seen that there because that's actually the worst one I've hit so far, probably a little bit Healy and it's actually cut away. It would have still found you know, the left edge of the fairway, the left rough, depending on what area I was lining up. It still carried 206 yards. We've lost about four to five yards of carry and the ball speed has stayed up. So that's exactly what these drivers are trying to do in terms of their forgiveness. And it is fast, 134.5 mile an hour on a miss hit is fast. A little bit lower there. It's still doing that little cut shape again. That's quite consistent. That one's just come out a little bit lower, which might be me just catching it a different part of the head. But again, look at this in terms of retaining it. Club head speed at 92, still got over 135 mile an hour of ball speed. So that's fantastic. Carrying at 205, spin at 2950, launching at 11.5. So a slightly lower one for me, which has probably cost us a few yards of carry, but I'm really impressed by how much it's retaining that ball speed, despite the fact that I've maybe not hit that one that great. It's really good. It's yeah, off center hits, performing fantastically well. Again, really consistent ball flight. Again, just getting that same shape of a little baby cut out of it time and time again. Ball speed, 134 again off of a 93 mile an hour hit. Carry at 206, total 235, spinning at 2500, launching 11.6. It's really consistent, really consistent. It's doing the same thing time after time, little cut. It's delivering very, very similar ball speed numbers all the time. Absolutely unbelievable. And the carry numbers there are thereabouts, sort of 206. If I absolutely middle one, I'm getting that 212. Yeah, it's good. I've just pulled that, dead straight pull. Yeah, look at that ball speed jump up because of the pull, 137.5. Carrying at 206 again, that seems to be the number of the day with this, ball, uh, with this club today. Spinning at 2660, low launch because of the fact I hit a pull, but it stayed in the air. Again, baby cut on repeat. Look at that, 138 mile an hour of ball speed, carrying 212.5, Total at 235, spinning at 3236. Again, I've launched that really low. I've caught that low on the face. Hopefully the spin will be up to keep it in the air. Again, 92.5 mile hour club head, related to 135.9 of ball, carrying at 195, spinning at 3363, low on the face, span up a little bit to keep it in the air. Like, that's so forgiving. Oh yes. Again, just a baby cut on repeat. What a consistent ball flight. 92.6 mile an hour club head speed, ball speed 134.7, carrying 200, total 222, spin rate 3613, launching at nine. So that's again me, I'm hitting it a little bit low on the face the last couple, but the club is doing exactly what you want it to do. It's keeping the ball in the air. It's giving me some real forgiveness. And like I say, I'd probably be playing the max model anyway. And this is just the standard. Yeah, that's good. That's just launched like an aeroplane taking off that one. 94.6 on the club head speed, ball speed 138, carrying at 206, spinning at 3593, 
yeah, like absolutely great. Okay, so done hitting shots with the Cobra Aerojet driver. I could have hit more shots with it. I really, really liked hitting it. I loved how forgiving it was, but I am filming a couple of driver reviews today. I don't want to gas myself out before I've had a chance to hit the other driver. But my first impressions in the bay, super, super consistent, super, super forgiving, which is exactly what this manufacturer and all the manufacturers are selling their drivers on at the moment. In terms of what I was seeing is when I hit it out the middle, I was getting performance as good as anything I get with my own custom fit Ping G410 driver. What I was seeing Seeing though is that when I was miss hitting it, particularly when I, I felt like I was hitting it low on the face, we can obviously check that impact location when I get home. It was retaining the, uh, the ball speed, it was retaining the carry distance, it was only a small drop off of a couple of yards and that was because the spin was creeping up a little bit. But yeah, it did absolutely fantastically well. It felt like it was just on a baby cut all day, baby cut, baby cut all day. Yes, I pulled one, yes, I've kind of cut one away a little bit too much. But I think I'd have found fairway with every single or, or worst case kind of first cut with every single shot I've hit with it today. And it's just a really great driver. It's a really nice one to hit. It makes a great sound. Yeah, C Cobra, great job. Now what we need to do is we need to go home, take these feels that I've had in the bay, put it side by side against the real data, compare it to the batch of shots I hit with my own Ping G410. And let's see if I still feel the same about the Cobra Aerojet driver. So I just want to show you the data from the batch of shots you've just seen me hit with the Cobra Aerojet driver compared side by side with the batch of shots I've just hit with my Ping G410 shortly before I started filming on the same day. Now what you can see here is that the Ping G410, my own driver, the club head speed was on average 1.9 mile an hour faster. Now that's understandable, my Ping is custom fit for me, I've had it for a few years, I feel confident with it, and I really feel like I can go after it. Versus the Cobra Aerojet that I just picked up and started hitting shots for you as you saw on camera. However, despite that, the ball speed with the Cobra Aerojet was on average 0.4 mile an hour faster. And as a result, the smash factor of 1.45 is better than the 1.42 with my own ping driver. That says to me that the Cobra Aerojet has a lot more potential to be a faster driver than my ping G410. Now with drivers, we're always talking about high launch, low spin. You can see that I did get slightly better conditions with my own Ping G410 driver, but as I'll show you in a second, that's mainly down to the strike location. I was hitting the Cobra Aerojet a little bit lower on the face, and as a general rule, that does mean that the launch is a little bit lower and the spin does kick up a little bit to keep the ball in the air. Because of that, the carry distance with the Cobra Aerojet was 5.4 yards shorter than my Ping G410, but you could see that I could get some really good numbers out of it when I did find the sweet spot of it. And I do think because of that smash factor, if I did have a custom fit and I did find the same sweet spot with this driver, it would be as long, if not longer, because of that ball speed potential in the Cobra Aerojet. Just to show you that strike location brought to life, you can see that I was hitting my Ping G410 in that perfect sweet spot of just above center and just slightly towards the toe time after time. Again, it's custom fit for me and that's why I'm able to do that. With the Cobra Aerojet, you can just see it brought to life. There's quite a lot of strikes that are just below the equator and slightly towards the bottom of the face, as well as a couple that are slightly towards the heel, which also would have kicked up a little bit of gearing and also reduced a little bit of distance. However, despite that, just want to show you the dispersion. I did feel like with this driver, I could just stand up, aim down the right-hand side, and hit a baby cut back onto target time after time. And we can see that here. The furthest to the left-hand side was the one that I hit, which was a bit slicey, that went 18 yards to the left. And if we take away the one pull to the right-hand side, the other furthest to the right was only 12 yards to the right. So nine out of 10 drives were in a 30-yard dispersion window, which is absolutely mind-blowing for a handicapped golfer to have that kind of tight dispersion with a driver time after time, particularly one they've just picked up and started hitting for the first time. I even think that pull that I hit to the right-hand side would probably still have found the first cut on most, most golf courses as well. So I'm confident that actually I wouldn't have lost any kind of shots here and would still be able to have a good shot into the green with all of these drives. Overall, a fantastic driver. So just wanna give you my final thoughts on the Cobra Aerojet driver. Now, firstly, those ball speed claims. Hopefully you can see from the batch of shots that I've hit today that this thing is an absolute ball speed monster. For me to be getting drives into 138 mile an hour ball speeds is absolutely mind blowing. I genuinely do believe that if this driver was custom fit for me and I had the right shaft and the right head configuration, I could smash the 140 barrier, which is something I've never done before. So I do think this thing is an absolute ball speed machine and Cobra have done a fantastic job in that regard. 
In terms of the forgiveness, you could see that I was hitting a baby cut with this driver almost on repeat, and I was able to find fairway with almost every single one of the drives that you saw me hit, except for the one that I did pull down the right-hand side, but that was all me, and even that drive would probably end up just in the first cut of rough. So I think Cobra have done a fantastic job of making it consistent. That shot shape of a baby cut just was on repeat, and it did inspire a lot of confidence. Now for me personally, I do think I'd probably play the max version of the driver and hopefully that would straighten out the ball flight just a little bit more for me and stop me from worrying that I might hit that one that did slice a little bit too far. But overall, great job Cobra. I think if I was in the market for a new driver at the moment, this would definitely be on my test list as a handicap golfer. Now all that remains for me to say is if you like my video, please do consider giving it a thumbs up. It really does help other like-minded golfers to find my content on YouTube. And if you're not yet subscribed to the channel, then please do consider hitting that button, subscribing to the channel, and you'll get notified when there's lots more free golf content landing on the channel in the coming weeks. Thank you so much for watching my video. Have a great day. Keep on that quest to become a weekend tour pro. Goodbye.